Hey guys, it's Honey. I apologize for having been so distant recently. I had a very scary thing happen to me and I wanted some time to just process it and be with friends and family and kind of get through it before I shared it with you guys. And I hope that this story can serve as an educational purpose for people to realize that certain things can happen, no matter how competent you are. So, here goes. Originally, I was planning on posting a vlog of a road trip for me going from Southern California to Tennessee, where my family has moved to. And so, the vlog kind of starts out fairly normal. I leave Southern California around noon in the af afternoon. <laughs> and I have like these timestamps, and so I'm making videos along the way. I'm trying to push as as far as I can. And so on my clock it says, oh, I'll reach Albuquerque, New Mexico around midnight. And so I was going to try to get to Albuquerque because that's about as far as I wanted to push that day. And the original plan that I had was to go through Albuquerque, stay at a rest stop outside of Albuquerque, and sleep maybe a couple of hours and then keep moving forward. However, when I reached about Flagstaff, Arizona, my mom calls me and she's like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just book a hotel room for you because I'd rather you stay in a hotel with a bed and whatnot. And I didn't disagree because I wanted to sleep in a bed. That's much better than in a car. And so she booked me a hotel. It was a La Quinta Inn and Suites that was right off of the I-40 that was outside of Albuquerque. It wasn't in the dead city center because Albuquerque is kind of sketchy. And it had about a 4.5 out of 5 star rating with 1,400 reviews to back that up. And so we thought, okay, this is a decent hotel. So I pull into Albuquerque around 12.30 with having gas stops and whatnot. And I go in and I check in and I get my key and I end up being on the fourth floor. And I go back to the car and I... I have all my stuff in the back of my car. Basically, all of my belongings are in that car. And so I didn't want the car to be parked in a spot that was overly obvious that I have all this crap in the car because I didn't want people to break in. And so I end up finding a spot that's between these two massive trucks, so it kind of overshadows my tiny little Subaru and kind of shelters it in a way. And so I grab my backpack and all of my electronics, just in case, because my electronics are ultimately what's the most important to me, and a little a bag of clothes. I lock my car, I hear it beep, and then I go up to my hotel room. I get ready for the evening, and this is the last vlog here of me just telling everybody I've made it to a hotel room, what time it was, and then I'm falling asleep. So the next morning, I wake up, and there were a couple things that were just off about the room. I remember waking up and seeing a light that I remember explicitly turning off because the switch is backwards from how we have it in California. Okay, so I just woke up, and I'm kind of weirded out because this light over here, this light right here, was on, which I remember I had turned off last night. And then I woke up and I came into the bathroom. And there are Sour Patch Kids right here that I did not put there last night. So this is this is very strange. Like what the what the heck? It's like was someone in my room? But like none of my valuables are gone. Like my camera is still here. All of my Apple stuff is still here, my other camera. I didn't look for my wallet or anything. This is just really weird. What in the world happened? Like, people should not be able to get into your room without a key. So how the heck did they get in here? This is so weird. And this haunting realization came to me that somebody was in my room while I was asleep. And I kind of panic, and my innate instinct is to not touch anything or use any of my hygiene products. I didn't use my toothbrush, my deodorant, nothing, because who knows what they did to it. And so I go through my stuff, and 
I rush over and I try to look through my wallet. Nothing had been stolen. It didn't even look like it was really even rummaged through. All my electronics were there. My clothes were there. My wallet was there. And so I was like, okay, I just need to leave. And so I get dressed and I'm trying to pack up stuff because I'm just weirded out at this point. And I am looking for my car keys and I can't find them anywhere. Initially, I think maybe I'm the idiot that in a fuzzy memory of being half awake at 1 a.m. in the morning, I misplaced them. And so I'm looking everywhere, all across the hotel room, in through my stuff. I can't find them anywhere. And then I look outside and there's the car. It's still there. It's still parked in the same exact parking spot from last night. And I thought, that's, that's bizarre. Okay, maybe that person that had come in took my keys. Maybe they were in some sort of drunken stupor, had the wrong room, took the wrong keys. Maybe they give it to the receptionist because they realized it. And so I go down to the receptionist and I'm like, hey, were there any car keys that were turned in last night? And she's like, well, I don't know, but here's all the car keys that I do have. Of course, none of them are mine. I'm like, okay, well, thank you. I go out to the car and I check the driver's door and the driver door was open. And I remember the night before I had checked that everything was locked because the car beeped. So I was like, okay, somebody has been in the car now. And I look at all my stuff, nothing had been stolen, nothing visually was rummaged through. And so I grabbed my GoPro case that was in the front seat. I grabbed that mainly because I wanted to see, okay, am I going crazy? Was this on me? Or was somebody actually in my room because I had filmed that night and I wanted to see the footage to see if I could see where the keys were placed. And so I go back up and I look at the footage and sure enough, the keys are on the desk. So it wasn't my fault. The person that was in my room had taken my keys. And so I follow a police report because in order for the hotel to really secure the camera, camera footage of someone maybe in the hallway entering my room, they needed a police report filed. And so I'm on the phone with the police reporting that somebody was in my room and my keys are now missing. Meanwhile, my mom tells me I need to go down to the car to get the VIN number because she needed it in order to get a new key made for me from the Subaru dealer that was in Albuquerque. And so I go back down and I take a picture of the VIN number. The car's still there, it's totally fine. I come back up and I'm getting off the phone with the police and whatnot and I look out the window and the car is gone. The car is just completely gone. And so now I had to file a police report regarding a stolen vehicle. And that was really weird too, because at this point I was like, okay, somebody has been watching me and they waited for the opportune moment to take my car. But also why would you take my car in broad daylight? That makes no sense. So I'm going up and down talking to the receptionist about security of camera footage. And in the lobby, there is a white man in a plaid shirt that is kind of loitering there. And every time I go up to my hotel room, He's always by the elevator, which I thought was very odd. And so I kind of just used the stairs every time because he was just there. And I was like, I don't know what he's doing, but I don't want to be around people. And so I go back up to my hotel room and my mom said that she had talked to a police officer that works at the elementary school that she works at in Tennessee because they actually have a police officer on campus that works for the PD. And he had said that at that moment that someone was watching me, that this wasn't just a theft at this point, this was trafficking. And they're watching me and they're trying to basically nab me. And so of course, this intense fear just overcame me at that point. I packed up everything and I was like, I need to get the heck out of here. I just need to find a way out. And originally we were supposed to have a rental car come from Enterprise. They never showed up. They never even called me. I can't just order an Uber because who knows, they might be in on it too. I couldn't trust anyone at this point. Because how does somebody get into my room without the hotel staff being in on this? And then now there's this guy that's loitering in the hotel lobby. And even though I'm trained in self-defense, I can't fight the world. I can't fight 
everyone. And if I'm drugged, I'm gone. So I pack up my stuff and I go down to the hotel lobby. Because I felt like I was a sitting duck in the room. And I sit in this in this spot that is ever so placed so I can see everyone in front of me and nobody can be behind me. And so I sit in front of this window and behind the window there is a path from the hotel lobby leading down to the pool and then a pavilion off to a 45 from where I was sitting. I noticed that there's also a guest, another guest, in the hotel lobby. He was on a Zoom meeting, doing whatever he was doing, working online. And I was like, okay, thank God, there's someone else here besides the hotel staff and that weird dude that's lo lottering, lottering, loitering in the lobby. However, I do see that white dude walk behind me on that pathway and go and sit in this pavilion. That pavilion that was off to the 45 from me, you can ever so conveniently see the entire inside of the hotel lobby and the exit. So if he saw me get up and leave, he could tell somebody because he was on the phone talking to them and kind of watching me. And so at this point, I call the police department again. I'm like, I need somebody to come and pick me up because I'm very fearful and I just need someone to come and pick me up from the situation and take me to the police station because this is not cool. And the operator was just like, well, the police don't give rides. And I'm like, how do I explain it to this person without the hotel staff hearing that I'm onto their game because then they could rush me and get somebody here so they can take me, remove me from this very dangerous situation. And she finally was like, well, okay, we'll send out an officer within within the hour. And I was like, I'm gonna have to sit in panic mode in this hotel lobby for an hour before a police officer can show up and take me to the station? Like, what the heck? And so my mom eventually calls 911. And they said that there was already a police officer that was dispatched out and was gonna be there within 10 minutes. And so we think that I was very lucky to have that police officer that works with her because our suspicions are that he called ahead and told them my situation was like, get somebody over there now. And so meanwhile, I'm in the lobby and I have this front on me. It's like, don't mess with me. It's just like fight, fight mode. And the police cruiser comes up and I can see him walk in and I immediately just like break down. I'm like, oh my God, thank God someone's here because you're just in this fearful state. I've never felt that sort of fear before. My battery on my camera died, so I'm resulting to the phone. <laughs> but anyway, I had this front that I just was going to fight to the death. And then the officer walks in and that front is immediately just faded. And he asked me, of course, those routine questions where it's like, okay, I hear your car was stolen. How do you know somebody was in your room? Yada, yada, yada. They show him the security footage and they reveal that there was ever so conveniently no security footage of the hallway that I was staying in, of course. And not really much in terms of who took my car. Like they didn't get much from the parking lot. And so he goes and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to come back later. And while I'm talking to the officer, that white guy that was in the pavilion had come in and started talking to another hotel employee. And I think they were eavesdropping to see what I was telling the officer. And so the officer comes up to me, he's like, okay, well, what's your plan? What do you plan on doing from here? And I told him, well, there was supposed to be a rental car in earshot of those people in the hotel lobby. And he's like, oh, okay. And then I whispered to him like, I am very fearful. Can you please drive me down to the to the station? And he said, yes, I will do that for you. And so I get into the police car and there's actually another police car behind him. So there had been two officers dispatched out to my location. And he gets into the car and as he gets into the car and that white dude walks out from the hotel lobby across the parking lot and is talking to a guy that's in a pickup truck. And I say to the officer, you know, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. However, that man has been loitering in the lobby all morning watching me. And I find it very, very suspicious. And with all the sex trafficking and stuff that's happening, that's not cool. And he's like, okay. And so 
they we leave the hotel on the way to the station he's telling me that that area that location with those three hotels the quinta there's like a motel six and something else that's where he goes to look for sto stolen cars and it's probably the worst part of albuquerque so it's like of course you know this crime ridden city and then i choose happen to choose the worst part of it and so we get to the police station and he talks to the people out in the back and he comes up to me and he's he says well you can stay here for however long as you need you know there's a bathroom there's water take your time stay here however long you need to in order to feel safe again it's like thank you and so in there I, I call enterprise and i'm like where the hell is my car because i'm supposed to get a rental car and it's not here so where the heck is it and he said with the re reservation the the nearest time i would be able to get a car would be monday and it was friday and i was like heck no because i wanted to get out of the city at this point i just wanted to leave i didn't want to be in this place where i kind of felt gross because when you have someone come into your room you feel violated and disgusting and so from there i was like well never mind because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna drive out i didn't even feel like driving out at that point because it's like I would be incessantly looking over my shoulder and who knows, maybe they could follow me. You never know. And so I actually booked a flight that afternoon and took an Uber to the airport. And the Uber driver was super, super nice, super safe. And he said that that La Quinta, he doesn't even pick up people from that place because of how sketchy it is. I was like, okay, of course it validates everything. So I get to the airport and that was the first time I was able to ingest something. I bought something. I bought like a vitamin white water that was the first time i was able to actually drink and ingest something that day because of all the stress that i was feeling and so I, I get onto the plane and i make it to tennessee no problem from there but ultimately with this video what i want is to be able to share with you guys and educate you guys that despite how competent you may be you know i i lived abroad i know some of the stuff that they do on the streets. You know, you, you never know everything and you know that things happen out there, that sex trafficking and human trafficking is a problem and it does happen, but you don't realize how dangerous it can actually be until it happens to you or someone someone close to you. And it, you could be the most competent person in the world and something dangerous still happens to you. And I wanna spread that awareness that women especially still have targets on their back that you still are targeted and you need to be aware and awake and i just happen to be extremely lucky because normally they do chloroform their victims while they're sleeping i'm just one of the incredibly lucky ones to have not had that happen to me that i woke up still in the hotel room and not in a cage in mexico somewhere I am so lucky and it doesn't happen that way for everyone. But I wanted to educate other people on what they do and how to prevent it if you can to check your hotel rooms because more than likely there could be something in there. There could be a bug in there. There could be someone waiting in the room, which I think ultimately is probably what happened. Somebody waited in the closet or something was maybe under the bed waiting for me that way they don't have any record of keys entering other than my own so just being aware and i also wanted this to be a lesson in terms of fear too just because i i felt that fear that intense fear of helplessness that you can't do anything it's you versus everyone else and you you're not sure what to do but that's not going to stop me from traveling just because i felt that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm not ever going to travel again i'm going to travel i'm going to not allow that fear to control the rest of my life and I think that's a very important lesson too. It's like, just because I had a bad thing happen to me doesn't mean it's going to stop me from living. It's just gonna make me more aware. 
more aware and more cautious in order to keep my own safety the top priority. And I want to share this story so we can save other lives too, because you never know. It could be your sister, your daughter, you never know. But hopefully this was an eye opener for, for some people and hopefully people can just be careful when they're traveling. And I do care about everyone else's safety and I hope my story can resonate with some of you and impact your future travels and just being just being aware that it's it's something that happens it's very real and so some tactics that i've heard is like there's kind of like that door lock that has been going around on tiktok um staying on the first or the fifth floors generally speaking they won't try to do something to you and saying comments maybe about having a husband or something like that just to kind of deter them away from you so again i apologize for having taken forever to upload i just needed a lot of time to detach myself from the world for a little while recenter myself and process the emotions that i felt while going through this but I think ultimately a lot of positive and good things will happen. And I hope I can spread awareness through my experiences. Anyway, with that, I will be in Tennessee fairly soon. And there's going to be a lot of cool upcoming videos with that. There's all sorts of history out there that I can't wait to share with you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Please stay safe out there and stay traveling despite the fear that you might feel. Anyway, peace.